What many people don't understand about Starship is that without the Raptor engines, it's nothing. Building a rocket isn't just about making a giant piece of steel. You can have the most advanced rocket design in the world, but if it doesn't have a good engine, it won't even get off the ground. The engine is the heart of everything. And that's why SpaceX keeps improving not only the rocket, but also the engines that power it. Every time they change the Starship or the Super Heavy Booster, they have to upgrade the engines too. That's exactly what they're doing now. SpaceX recently developed a new generation of Raptor engines, and in this video, we're going to take a closer look at them. Before we go any further, make sure to subscribe to the channel for more updates like this. Now, let's get into it. Most space companies don't build their own engines. Instead, they buy them from other manufacturers. On paper, that might sound smart, but in the long run, it creates big problems. When you rely on someone else for your engines, you lose control over the supply and cost. If that supplier fails, your entire rocket program is stuck. That's why many space agencies, even government ones, have faced major delays because they depend on outside companies for their engines. SpaceX saw this early on and decided they would never let someone else control such a critical part of their rockets. From the very beginning, they designed and built their own engines completely in-house. The first one was the Merlin engine. It ran on kerosene and liquid oxygen, and it powered the Falcon 1 rocket, SpaceX's very first orbital launch vehicle back in 2006. The first three Falcon 1 launches failed, but the fourth one finally succeeded, proving the Merlin engine worked. That was a huge milestone for SpaceX. After mastering the Merlin line, SpaceX moved on to something much bigger, a completely new engine running on methane and liquid oxygen instead of kerosene. That's where the Raptor program began. Methane was chosen because it burns cleaner. The first prototype, Raptor 1, began testing in 2016 at SpaceX's facilities in McGregor, Texas. It used a full-flow staged combustion cycle, a type of engine that had never been successfully developed for an operational rocket before. It's an extremely complex design that burns both the fuel-rich and oxidizer-rich mixtures in separate turbines before they meet in the main combustion chamber. The benefit is efficiency and power, but the engineering challenge is enormous. Raptor 1 was bulky and difficult to build, but it proved the concept worked. Then came Raptor 2, which solved many of those problems. It was simpler, more powerful, and much easier to produce. Each engine could produce about 230 tons of thrust, and SpaceX reached the point where they could build one every day. Raptor 2 engines powered almost all of the early Starship and Super Heavy tests, including the first orbital flight attempts, but SpaceX didn't stop there. They kept refining the design. That's how we got to Raptor 3, which is set to power the first real orbital Starship flights around early 2026. Raptor 3 produces around 280 tons of thrust, or roughly 620,000 pounds. That makes it one of the most powerful liquid fuel engines ever built. It runs on liquid methane and liquid oxygen, a combination known as methalox. This is different from most other large engines that use kerosene or hydrogen. Raptor 3 also uses what's called a full-flow staged combustion cycle. That means both the fuel and the oxidizer are completely burned in separate pre-burners before entering the main combustion chamber. For comparison, Blue Origin's famous BE-4 engine, which powers the new Glenn and ULA's Vulcan rocket, produces about 244 tons of thrust and runs on the same methalox fuel combination. But it uses a simpler oxidizer-rich stage combustion cycle, which is easier to build but less efficient. The Raptor's chamber pressure reaches about 350 bar, while BE-4 operates at around 134 bar. That's more than two and a half times higher, giving Raptor 3 much better fuel performance and higher thrust-to-weight ratio. Even NASA's famous RS-25 engines, which powered the space shuttle, don't come close in pressure. The RS-25 runs on liquid hydrogen and oxygen, reaching around 207 bar of chamber pressure and producing about 187 tons of thrust. It's an incredible engine for its time, but it's far more expensive and complex. 
Each RS-25 costs around $100 million, while a single Raptor is expected to cost below $1 million once in full production. Raptor 3's power also makes it highly dense in performance. For its size, it delivers more thrust per kilogram than almost any other engine. It weighs roughly 1.6 tons, giving it a thrust-to-weight ratio of about 175 to 1. That's significantly higher than the BE-4's ratio of around 100 to 1-1, and much higher than older kerosene engines like the Merlin 1D, which has a ratio of around 150 to 1. This means Raptor 3 packs more power for its mass. What's more impressive is how SpaceX made the engine simpler and tougher. Earlier, Raptors needed heavy heat shields and complex external systems to handle extreme conditions. Raptor 3 doesn't. Engineers redesigned it to manage heat internally with better cooling channels and smarter component placement. But if you know SpaceX, you know they never stop improving. Even before Raptor 3 starts flying, Musk already confirmed the next big step. Raptor 4. Raptor 4 is expected to produce about 330 tons of thrust, nearly 18% more than Raptor 3. That's a massive upgrade. To put that into perspective, the Super Heavy booster uses 33 engines. With Raptor 4s installed, that would mean about 10,890 tons of total thrust at liftoff, over three times more powerful than the Saturn V, the rocket that took humans to the moon. If SpaceX slightly tweaks the booster design to fit 35 engines instead of 33, the total thrust could climb above 11,500 tons. That's an almost unimaginable level of power. The upper stage, Starship itself, will also get major upgrades in the newer versions that SpaceX is building right now. The next generation of Starship is a lot larger and more capable than the ones used for early test flights. The current Starship design includes nine sea-level Raptor engines and three vacuum Raptors on the upper stage, giving it around 3,000 tons of total thrust. That's almost equal to the total liftoff power of the Saturn V's first stage. The new Starship version goes far beyond that. The earlier prototypes, like Ship 24 and Ship 28, stood at about 120 meters tall when stacked with the Super Heavy booster. The upcoming Starship version 4 will stand at around 150 meters tall, nearly a 10-meter increase in height. Most of that growth comes from the upper stage, which has been stretched from about 52 meters to 62 meters long. The added height increases Starship's internal pressurized volume to over 1,000 cubic meters, giving it more than 10% more living and storage space than the entire International Space Station. The larger Starship is designed to handle long-duration missions to the Moon and Mars, with 6 to 12 astronauts on board. It can also carry heavier payloads, over 200 tons to orbit, compared to about 150 tons in earlier versions. The tanks are also larger. The Super Heavy booster will hold around 4,500 tons of propellant, while the upper stage carries about 2,300 tons. That's hundreds of tons more than the previous generation. To handle this much bigger and more powerful rocket, SpaceX has already started work on the new launch complex, known as Pad B, located right next to the existing one at Starbase. This new pad is being built to handle the Version 4 Starship and its Raptor 4 engines, which produce far more thrust. Construction began in mid-2024, and by late 2025 it will be complete. The new pad will include upgraded water deluge and methane vent systems to handle the increased heat and pressure during liftoff. To make room for this expansion, SpaceX has started demolishing the older launch pad. Once both the Texas Pad B and Florida sites are operational, SpaceX will have two full-scale Starship launch systems running in parallel. This will allow faster turnaround times and better support for upcoming missions. That's it for this video. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.